Hey, there we are. Wonderful. Hello, everybody. Oh, tuning into the flow from Home School Live today. Hello, everyone. We've got GP Walsh here sipping his. What fancy drink are you having this morning? This is uh, ma Yerba Mate. Ooh, yeah. all right. Yerba, Yerba Mate. Yeah. To get an energy kick from that. Yes. A little zap. Yeah, it's it's actually a, a nice. Um, they even recommend it for like the keto diet and stuff like that. Uh, it helps with appetite and a bunch of different things. Yeah, and, um, get but it does so it does have caffeine in it. Yeah, you get so revved up that you're like eating food. No, we don't have time for that. We gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta go. Places to go. People to see. Climbing that crazy rainbow right to the top. <laughs> oh, this climb the stairway to the stars. That's one of my favorite songs by Ella. Well, yeah. I would hope it would do it, but yes. All right. So, anyways, there's our little chit chat and welcoming to everybody. <laughs> um, I will I'm gonna just put it out there. Yes, Lucy and brings her inside, and we will be hearing Lucy. She is displeased with me, so she'll be our background <laughs> cheering mode, <laughs> cheering crowd, peanut crowd, yeah. <laughs> peanut gallery. So, so um, those of you who have requested more cat, you'll get more cat today. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right. And this is a busy week for GP and everybody who would love to join us because we want everybody to join us. And I'm just going to run through that quickly. So today you're here with us. Thank you so much. It's a fun one. I feel like it's a controversial one and I'll share with you why. But then tomorrow, the private satsang for all patron members is going to be at 1 p.m. noon Eastern. And we love that. So if you're not a patron and you're wondering, what is this whole patron event and why do they have a private satsang? <laughs> then, <laughs> then pop on over to the page and, you, and you'll see exactly why. Um, and, and then on Thursday, so you're busy, GP. We booked you. Yeah. Again at 1 p.m. Eastern, but with Evan Greger, who is the senior facilitator teacher, they both, you both are going to be doing the demonstration about inner reconciliation and why it's so yes. effective and how easy it is. So people can actually experience it and do that. So please tune in there. All right. Are we ready for today? Oh boy. Yes. <laughs> Today's lovely topic comes from um, probably my lifelong um twinge like oh I don't know if that sentence falls with me or that belief lands well with me and I wanted to explore it and have GP share with us not whether it's true or not but just expand it and what this is because I've we've all heard it or set have said it is yeah. you've got to love yourself first before you can love another <laughs> so this one always had a little a little twinge for me I I, I was like really why why? Why can't I love without having to love myself? What if, what if I don't love myself? Does it mean I'm never going to love? So, GP, right. I can open that right up to you. <laughs> well, first off, that'd be a hell of a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, without any real reward. <laughs> right? Um, it, it, it's, it's just one of those platitudes people like to put out there. Um, that it makes a good meme and it, and it sounds, uh, sounds like it has some substance to it, but it really doesn't. Um, you know, it is in our, it is in relationship that we learn so much about ourselves. Um, the only place where you can learn more about yourself is self inquiry. Um, mm -hmm. and if you do both, um, it's, you're, you're actually living your human life to the fullest. Um, we learn in relationship, right? Um, now, that's not to say that we can't get into things that are codependent and they are, um, they're actually more destructive than they are uh, uh, beneficial. Um, but even that has, a, has, if you come to see that, right? I mean, the whole thing comes down to if you see it. If you don't see it, you keep doing it. It's just the pattern just keeps over and over. Again. Why do I keep picking the wrong man? Right? How many times I've, I've I've heard that? Well, it's not because you're picking picking the the wrong man, and it's not because you don't love yourself. Right? There's these there's these unconscious pre-programmed patterns at work that that are wanting to always recreate the same environment because that's the environment in which it can guarantee safety. That's all that's going on. It's not that complicated, it's not a personal flaw, right? And somebody who actually does have some love and regard for themselves can still be in that position because these are unconscious programs that until we're conscious of them, 
they operate completely unrestricted, right? It's only our awareness of them that brings the power to actually uh, change them, change them, swap them out for better, for, uh, for better ways of being in the world. Now, the, the, the idea of coming to love yourself is obviously an important one. And, you know, if anybody's gone through any of my tapping or any of my classes, I spend a lot of, a lot of time going through the, pro, the underlying beliefs about I'm not enough, I'm not lovable, I'm not valuable, because we're all, we've all been saddled with those. They, they, they came to, uh, to all of us. We were taught not to love. But here's, let me throw another little twist in here. And I'll let you take this wherever you want to, but w we were, who we actually were, the real you, was not loved. It was not appreciated. It was not allowed to be expressive. So what we did is, well, we didn't do it. Your nervous system did it. It's just purely the mechanism, right? This happened even before you could talk. It, cre it buried away everything that was offensive to the tribe, even no matter what it was, no matter how good it was, no matter what kind of quality it was. Right? It was not allowed because the tribe didn't accept it. And, in, and the nervous system created a false version of yourself to present to the tribe in order to get from the tribe what it needed to survive. It succeeded. We all survived. We're all sitting around here talking now. So it worked. Right. Um, so now we're sitting here trying to love a creation that isn't actually you. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Because we're so identified with this, this creation, this imaginary self that has been created by the nervous system to protect you. And you completely forgot about you. You identified with this as far as this is concerned. This is who you are. But this non-existent, this purely conceptual, imaginary, fictitious cr <laughs> critter that exists only in your mind is what you've been doing all the personal development on, all the self-help on. And you're trying to come to love it. Right? right. There's nothing there to love right? It's not you. When you find you, you love you, period, right? If you don't find you, there's going to be this struggle because when you're not fully yourself, there's always something wrong. There's always a problem. I always need more. I'm always not enough, right? I always show up a dollar late and a day late and a dollar short, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so the, the question of... It, but the moment we start putting these requirements on ourselves, I cannot experience love with somebody else until I first love myself, right? I can't love anybody else. It, I mean, it's just demonstrably not true. Look at your own life. Of course you have. Yeah. Is it a, is it a matter of a word switch then by saying, um, I, I cannot love someone else until I am fully myself? Um, or no, you can love. So sorry, I cannot be loved until I'm pres until I am stripping away my identity. Ooh, that sounded horrible. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's truth. There's truth in it because if I'm really identified with a character that I'm not, it's not really me. Right. It's just, I'm so used to it. It's so habitual. I don't question it. Um, wh whoever is loving me is loving that character, not me. Right. Right. They, they don't even, they can't, I, they might not even see me, right? Because I don't see me and this is who I think it is. So it, 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 there's going to be a sense of it being not quite satisfying, right? Yes. And there'll also be a, a, a sense that, you know, we, we create these personas. It's like, you know, dressing up for the first date. Nobody shows up like a slob on the first date, right? Well, <laughs> You'd be surprised. <laughs> well, me. okay. Girls don't. <laughs> Girls don't, for, for sure. So I've never dated guys, so I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea how they might just actually show up like, yeah, hey, what's up, baby? You know, it's like, I suppose, yeah. it, I suppose it happens. Um, love me, take me and love me. <laughs> <laughs> take me the way I am, baby. Um, but... This is, this is a place where we end up, because we're actually, remember, the real you, it was dangerous for it to come out. So you're afraid to be the real you, right? You're, you're afraid on a very fundamental level that if I'm actually fully myself here and I let myself be seen, I'm going to be rejected. I'm not going to be, I am not lovable. I have to become a character that 
that I believe it will be lovable to the environment. And this, this, this process, this is the nervous system, when we're unconscious, continues all the way into adulthood. And then we start being people that we think we need to be in order to attract a mate or friends or any of those. We get lost in all of it. And underlying it is this unconscious, deeply, deeply seated program that simply is committed to keeping you hidden mm -hmm. because it because it assumes danger and of course at one time there was danger it was real can you can one love themselves and still be afraid of being seen uh, mm -hmm. by an individual by the world by like can yes because i can honestly say that pretty sure I love myself. I like, you know, I do. I really truly do like just the it, me. Um, but at times I'm definitely still like, e, they, they're going to see this about me or, or, you know, so does that eliminate my, now I don't love myself anymore? No, of course not. You can like yourself and uh, we all have a very natural uh, aversion to being rejected, right? <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> What it means is that we have not accepted the possibility that you might not be liked by everybody. Ah, yes. And, um, and matter of fact, yeah, I can guarantee you won't be. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, can I can guarantee it, you know. I've gotten some incredibly nasty comments on YouTube. <laughs> oh. <laughs> At first, they kind of took me by surprise. And now after a while, it's like, wow. Wow. <laughs> now, how did you, how would you have gotten not over it? How, how does one deal with that then? Because that's a great, this is going to be great here. Um, because yes, you've done the work, you've done self inquiry, you've been in, you've been married, you've been all those things. So those two things I love that you said, you know, we learn about ourselves through relationships and through self inquiry. And if we're doing both of those, we can live fully. So here you go. GP Walsh, spiritual teacher out there, loving and doing stuff. And all of a sudden a nasty comment comes in. And yeah, what? what well, people see, people see what they see, right? You know, when there's a, you know, there's an old saying, you know, when Peter talks about Paul, you learn more about Peter than you do about Paul. Yeah. Um, because they're talking, uh, they are making a comment on their perception of me. Well, their perception of me isn't me, right? And has no effect on me. It means nothing to me. Um, I, they don't have to like me, right? I, and that just means that I don't fit into their life right now. So they're not going to be showing up to satsang, you know. They showed up, and they, they said something nasty, and they left. I've served my function in their life. <laughs> 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 right? You have, to, you have to understand that, that everybody is at this place. And the real purpose of a relationship is to try to get past all of our the fears and our resistances and our and, and the like to try to find genuine int intimacy yeah. and of course that's the most scary thing there is in the world to, you know to risk being seen and rejected right yeah. now when you're a kid that risk is so high because to be rejected by the tribe means you're dead yeah. i mean you cannot survive without them which is what gives it its intensity Right. Now that intensity lingers when we're adults and we're like, you know, playing the mating game, right? We have this same sense of being rejected as death, right? Yes. Yeah. When in fact, at this point, it's not anymore. Right. It's just, you know, didn't work. <laughs> well, like what you said, you don't, you, know? you don't fit into that person doesn't fit into your life at this time and you know, maybe no longer fit into their life at that time. Um, and that was going to be one thing. So, some people think that um, what you said, if it's, if it playing the mating game, which is hilarious. I love that um, <laughs> is at some point you can serve your purpose and that could be it. They could have served their purpose. It could be um, one moment, uh, 20 years, a lot, you know, they can't be alive, but, um, and how, how, it doesn't mean just because I mean, yes, that something has fully come to serving that you no longer, oh, they're gone or you need to leave, but you don't not love yourself. It's not because you don't love yourself. Yeah, it has nothing to do with that. Yes. And, uh, you know, everybody has a, a function. Everybody who comes into your life has a function, even the people leaving nasty comments, you know, <laughs> that, that, you know, Darn that's it. part of the range of experience that 
that that I I need to have, right? In order to be able to in order to be able to process whatever might have been triggered in me about that. You know, and when they, you know, the first time it happened, you know, 10, 11 years ago or 12 when I started doing YouTube, it stung, right? Yeah. I want everyone like I knew it. And and then after a while, you you kind of you recognize the trigger, you realize what's happening. Um, wisdom begins to settle in, and then it just kind of goes right past. It's like not a big, it's not a big deal. And sometimes I kind of even, I can even marvel at how creative <laughs> they can get. <laughs> I said, "Wow, I didn't that. That's great. I've never. I would. That's the best cut I've ever heard." <laughs> oh. It was so funny when your on your sad song something popped up that really surprised me. It actually angered me a little bit. I was triggered, and I was like, "How dare somebody put something there on your sad song?" And, and you were so you made it so funny actually that I couldn't stop laughing about it after. <laughs> um, yes, and that's interesting. So when when it comes, okay, so. I, in, in their show description and everybody who, if you haven't got the show description, it means you're not on the light letter and you got to get on the light letter list, by the way. <laughs> so go to gpwalsh.com and sign up for that light letter. But your show descriptions are always neat. They always have that angle and you always, you kind of get the, the, le you, the upcoming lesson and you know, it's going to be good. And um, in there, it kind of, I love that. Where's my little, I wrote a little, my notes. Hold on here. Um, to let that, that love. Okay. Yeah. That we, we need to experience love in, we can experience love in every way. Yeah. So if we limit it or have a, your prerequisite of it, just of us, um, it really, I want to bring up codependency and dependency. Um, mm -hmm. if, if we say, oh gosh, it's all on me first. Um, but then we just can't and we get frustrated. So then we're trying to love others, trying to force love on others. Take it. Just let me love you, you know, because I'm <laughs> love myself, right? And if you don't love me, that means I don't love me. And we kind of feel it <laughs> as this deeper rejection. So when it comes to dependency, is it, Relationships do have a dependency, but is there like a, a line that can be crossed or none? Is it about a lack of self-love and, and inquiry that? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Everything is a matter of, of, of what it means to the individual and what, what kind of effect and influence it has, right? A glass of wine is fine, but a bottle or two a night is not, right? <laughs> so, right, so I, I mean this is the whole point where where is this place that is just one is just you're experiencing things and the and the other it has become an attachment right Ooh, yeah. and the attachment uh, uh, results um out out of some part of us that is um that we're unconscious of that is has has yet to be brought to the party a part of us that has been rejected and mm -hmm when that part of me that is rejected, I do not have access to it. I'm going to project those characters or those characteristics outward. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm either going to be seeking them or I'm going to be judging them. Oh. Right? That's, that's the way it works. When I've cut stuff off from myself, especially if, if I've cut myself off from the capacity to be loved, right. I'm going to, ha I could have very harsh rules about, what should be done, what this is the right way to be in relationship, this is wrong, no sex before marriage, you can't, you know, all that, all those kinds of things that we 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 come up with, which are, are a projection of the rejection of our own nature, right? a rejection of our own human humanness. Um, but at the same time, we because we do not have access to that, right? We're we're craving it, right? And when we what, what we're really craving is ourselves, right? Not to just love yourself like that, but to know yourself, to actually have access to all of you, right? Which is, which is, which is bigger than the, what we just call it. I like myself. Gosh, darn it. People like me, right? Um, <laughs> it's, it, it's, it, it's just fundamental part of, parts of us that because of the childhood experiences and some that are not in childhood, we don't have access to it. It's been buried out of sight, right? Um, but we need access to it, right? In order to function fully in life, we do have to be fully ourselves. And so our whole lives are spent compensating because I don't know how to turn within. I don't know how to do self-inquiry and revive and rediscover all of those things 
Um, yeah, I haven't heard about any of that yet. Uh, and so what I'm doing instead is I'm trying to find it out there. I'm looking for these missing pieces out there. And when I do that, I'm very likely to project them onto somebody and they're not even there. Right? Um, and at that point, I can become very needy. I can become possessive um, I, it, it, because I, it, there's a sense of desperation. And if I get a little bit of it, I'll put up with abuse and all sorts of, sorts of things. This is the dynamic that, that makes that happen. So it, it really be, it boils down to just self, self, a self, the soul reconnect is what it's about. I've got to get, we have to get reconnected to yourself, to, your, to the real self, to the natural self, to the self that's not an effort to be, right? When that happens, you know, the projection begins to dissipate and go away. The compensation isn't necessary. And at this point, you are now open to be in relationship in such a way that you are actually being seen. There's, there's no dependency at that point. There's no, there's no, um, um, there's no more projection on them. There's no, you're not compensating any longer. You're actually present. And that allows you to fully experience being seen and really being loved, right? Which is what you didn't get in the first place, which caused the trauma, right? Yeah. And, and so that kind of self-awareness, it's tentative at first, but when you have that self-awareness, it, it begins to allow itself to trust its own insight. Mm, right? Yes. And, and little by little, not, not necessarily at first, you may go through a couple more totes before you come to the <laughs> prince, um, <laughs> but it won't have the same kind of horrible sting. Though it, It'll just be kind of like adjustments, course corrections are being made because there's a wisdom at play now that wasn't there before. Um, yes. Because you're now looking at the into the right place for the actual source of love. Right? The actual essence of love is the self. And then that that the genuine love that is your very nature recognizes it in somebody else. It's the pure namaste. Mm. Right. And then when there's, you know, the other kinds of attraction on top of it, it's just sweet as hell. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, oh, that I love that you said um oh okay. Question about self-inquiry, knowing yourself, being able to be fully yourself. Again, is there that fine line between it okay, because I'm gonna come right out and out myself here? Um, when I finally did was doing the self-inquiry, and I was like, enough is enough about these, you know, not serving relationships. Um I was definitely accused of being self-centered and, and you only want what yes. you want. Yes, I do only want what I want. <laughs> and, so, yes. and if it doesn't fit, it doesn't fit. But there is this, um, I love that you said trust in your own, oh gosh, insight. Trust in your own yeah. um, insight. And that is because of experience, all, ex all people who have experience with others, as you do that inquiry, you, 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 do you have a greater sense like, oh, well, I'm more me and fully me for real when I'm in this relationship, but I'm not. Like, we can feel it. And yes, it, absolutely. Okay. It's not self-centered. Like, well, or is, yeah, let's call, is it just call a space? <laughs> well, yeah, but it's, it's, it's centered in the right self. <laughs> right? Ooh, okay. So then you'll, you'll be able to recognize the relationships that, 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 honor your freedom to be you that actually love you right yes uh, it's not compensating anymore and i you know i want to elevate it this is this is this is the self-love that arises out of self-knowledge it isn't just an emotional thing i'm going to like myself i'm going to try to like i'm going to try to like this broken piece of crap that i am <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> i want to love it but i can't <laughs> i'm a, i'm a mess and i love myself anyway um <laughs> Right. Yeah, it's not that. It's 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 when you find out who you are, you realize that you are and always have been imminently lovable. You know, your parents didn't see it. That's what happened. It wasn't that it wasn't there. They weren't capable of seeing it. And most of us had quite dullard parents that could not see the the incredible beauty and creativity and wonder and and um, freedom of the child. They simply couldn't see it. Burdened by the 
by the conditioning of the tribe and when they lay that conditioning that conditioning on on the kid um so yeah you're going to be drawn to the areas that are going to be enhancing this mm -hmm. that are going to be creating environment for you to realize even more freedom right? right whereas before it was always the it was always serving the interest of hiding you right yes. the very same that very same energy will be drawing to it things that enhance you that amplify it that bring you into circumstances where aspects of you get revealed that would not get revealed in any other way. Yeah. Right. And, and, and that's where you actually find the kind of relationship that people are craving. Right. Mm. Yes. And, and so, the, you know, the idea you have to love yourself first, um, you have to know yourself. I would say that that would be true. But when people say that they don't really know what they're talking about. You know, they're, yeah, it, it's very, it's very superficial. That's why I dismiss it and, and say it isn't really very helpful, right? Because now you, you, you're trying, then people get in the, first they beat themselves up. It's all my fault because I don't love myself. And now they're struggling to find out how to love themselves. And, and, and it's just this endless loop of self-deprecation. <laughs> how can you love yourself if you don't know yourself, right? How can, how, uh, yes. Yeah. Well, Unless you truly can, well, because because I only now, and I want to actually use Jay's as um, a question in a second. Jay, that was a very good comment. Yes, yes, it was a comment. I have a good question with it. Um, but sometimes I feel like the light in, in me just does love the light in someone else without knowing their identities and what they've portrayed. Yes. But I, you can feel, is that possible that you can? Well, it's, a, it's absolutely the truth. It's absolutely the truth, yeah. Um, yeah, I love everybody. Absolutely everybody. You ah. know, even the people, even the people who are who are despicable. I can yeah. I can see the light. I'm not going to hang out with them. I'm not going to marry them, <laughs> right? Because I'm also wise enough to see where they are and their conditioning and what they're and the level at which they're if they operate, right? I don't swim with sharks. Yes, I, it's what they do, right? I know they're filled with light. The same consciousness that animates me animates the shark. Right. Oh. And it'll animate him right to biting off my leg. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. too. So you have to see that love on that level is completely impartial. It's like the sun. It shines on everything. Right. Yes. But there's also a wisdom. Right. What am I actually going to bring into my immediate circle? What's going to be. Uh, it's it's not it's not a, a, a naive or Pollyannish kind of love it's very very wise it's very very discerning and it is the most loving thing to know okay this guy can't be trusted right that's a very loving thing to know you're not going to put yourself in the position that you're not going to put, give yourself him the opportunity to take advantage of something he's going to have to go somewhere else um so but but you can but when you really understand how it happened how people became that way why is, you know, why are politicians the way they are, right? For the same reason you are the way you are, conditioning, and they're unconscious of it. And so they're acting out their unconscious thing. And we love to get mad at them. We love to get, you know, and hate them and all that sort of stuff. But it's like hating your computer, right? I, I mean, it's just doing what it was programmed to do. And it will continue to do that until some kind of consciousness dawns. So if I'm mad at them and I'm angry at, at them, Right? Am I contributing to consciousness dawning? <laughs> but if I can yeah. see the light in them, and for me it's real, uh, isn't that going to isn't that going to begin to open the door? If there is some crack in that shell, right? That's where it's going to get in. You know, something somewhere, and suddenly it, it's going to there's going to be a sensitivity to it some way. Yeah. You know, um, one of the things that I've been hearing in a lot of corporations. Not from the the board of directors, the big stockholders and stuff, which are still have the same attitude. They'll make me as much money as you possibly can. But you go down, you do go down the levels where there's you know a middle manager or something or a, a lower level executive who he's not only a, he he his job isn't to worry about the stock price. It's to make sure the things get done. And in order to do that, he has to have happy employees. And and right now. It, morale in the United States is the worst it has ever been in probably since the Great Depression. 
and they're, they're struggling. So, you know, they're in, in between. So there's, there's something that's forcing these people that otherwise would just be the rule enforcers, right? In something's breaking open. Right? Yes. And, you know, I hate to say it, but the number one thing that breaks our hearts, our hearts open is suffering. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it just, it breaks the back. Mm -hmm. it, it does. Yeah. It breaks the back of it. Yeah. It's like at some point you just, I'm suffering. How do I get out of this? That, that lends itself in perfectly and sorry i'm not there yet jay but this one's really good because it, it goes well <laughs> is um suffering and it breaks the back and i was going to ask about people who um well i guess using the word addiction i don't want to use the word addiction people who are hurting themselves often other people will say it's because you don't love yourself. And I always saw that as no, they're actually hurting themselves because they know they love themselves so much that they are trying to find a way out of suffering. And I was going to ask. Well, yeah, that's them. actually true. That, that, that's, that's actually true. I mean, the most loving thing we can do is to try to get out of suffering. And yeah, even an action of somebody hurting themselves, cutting themselves, or uh, they're trying uh, they, they don't know what to do. It's so the energy is so constricted. It's trying to get out. And yeah, it's, it's going to come out in really weird ways. It's going to come out sideways because it isn't allowed to come out the front door. Um, but that intensity to be free, that's really what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and, and so it's, yeah, we have to obviously protect them from themselves, but it, it isn't going to do any good to just like, you know, give them a pill or something. It, they've got to become free. I mean, the freedom is, freedom is the answer. And by freedom, I, I don't mean political or economic. I mean the freedom to actually express who you are and the freedom to have the capacity to be able to discover who you are, mm -hmm. which, is, which appears to be a luxury, but it's an absolute necessity. You know, self-inquiry is, is not a luxury. <laughs> right yes you know it's not the lexus it's the kia <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes <laughs> once somebody has um they're doing the self-inquiry and, and they they know who they are they're they're loving themselves they do they are expressing who they are and then s other people say no that's horrible. No, don't, don't be who you are. Like, but as adults now, so no longer that child, no longer, you know, um, needing right. that tribe to stay alive. Uh, Jay was mentioning, you know, he really, he just loves his life. He loves being with his wife and his children. And, but he, when people say you're boring or they, they say, trust me, <laughs> I, I've had, I've had, people have told me this. Because I love you you're boring. Happy. You're happy. Yeah. What are you doing? So you're happy? boring and happy. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you, you're not out skydiving <laughs> and, and, you know, yes. traveling the world. And, and I get this all the time, Jay. That's why I actually connected with us. Cause I really, really enjoy all the fun in my mind and, and being with a cat. So it's, yeah, I get that too. But I just wonder like, <laughs> Do we, what happens if we do feel bad about that? Like, oh my gosh, people think I'm boring. Maybe I'm missing out on life or do we not? Or shouldn't we do I, so yeah. Shouldn't I be life? doing more, right? Should I be doing more? Shouldn't yeah. I be doing more? And this, uh, this is, oh God, what a horrible, what a yeah. horrible uh, sentence we get, we put on ourselves. Because then people get, oh, I'm 40 years old. I should be further along. Why are not married? I should have yeah. kids. I mean, on and on and on and on it goes. Um, there's all these, all this criteria as to how we should be. Well, the, love means ex accepting things as they are. But when love is unconditional, it, it has no, that means it doesn't have conditions. It doesn't have prerequisites. Whatever it is right now in this moment is loved, right? Does that mean I, I worship it? It turns me on or it, No, it just simply means it's totally accepted. It's, yes, you are okay just the way you are. And isn't that, that's all we wanted as children. <laughs> yeah. That's all we wanted, right? Yeah. And we didn't get it. The most simple, basic thing, love them for who they are, mm -hmm. not for what you think they're supposed to be. And not getting that. And so now there's, there's rules for everything. Yes. Yeah. And of course, you know, people who are, who are committed to their misery, somebody comes along who's happy, right? If there's a crack in the armor, 
they're going to ask, why are you happy? Tell me your secret. Um, if they're not going to go, why are you happy? <laughs> what do you got to be happy about? Look, the world sucks. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and that's the way it's going to be. So, you know, living a simple life, I mean, God, what could be better than just, you know, I, you know, I don't have to have big ambitions. Yeah. Jay's, he loves his wife. He loves his kids. He's enjoying his life. It's like, well, well okay. Leave the fucker alone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what more could anybody want? Trust all, me, we want is to, to <laughs> all we, all we want is to be happy. But the way the world thinks is to be happy means certain conditions have to be fulfilled. Right. Yes. And if you haven't fulfilled those, how can you possibly be happy? You're yeah. not rich. You know, you're not married to the supermodel. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> or to the Chip and Dale, if, the female equivalent, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> you know, or the That's billionaire. I mean, uh, these are just all, yeah. all the rules we put on ourselves to, 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 it, to not experience life as it is in this moment. And when you do, that's love. Experiencing yourself in this moment. You want to love yourself? Don't compare yourself to anyone or anything else. Try it for five seconds. Yeah. No comparisons, right? It's just me. I'm here. So, yeah, but you're too... No, wait, no comparison. I'm too fat. Well, compared to what? <laughs> <laughs> right? Too skinny. Compared to what? Right? Yeah. I'm not pretty enough compared to what? They're all comparisons, right? So now put all of those aside and just, just me yeah. in relation to absolutely nothing else. No other reference point other than me, pure, purely myself. And now what's wrong? I love that you brought up reference point. Um, actually, Tomas actually mentioned that earlier. He's like, I wonder if he's going to talk about reference point. <laughs> So, um, and to me, that is um, a symbolic of the environment. So let's let's just use that example about I'm I'm too fat. Well, if you're in an environment with a lot of skinny girls, then you're going to think you're too fat. And if you're in an environment with a lot of bigger girls, you're going to think you're too skinny. And it's not by changing the adjusting the lens, adjusting the environment. It's because that's that's just wonky. Like it's gonna you know this this that's guy. Correct. Yeah this guy's really hot and rich and he, you know, if compared to, so then he didn't take me. So then I'll go to this guy who's really poor and all this stuff, you know, so it doesn't, <laughs> that's not the way to, um, yeah, to adjust and to. Yes. Go it, it, it's the relative reference point that hides, a, hides the absolute you from you because you're comparing yourself now at this Compare. point. It's not you. It, it's not you in, anymore. It's like you compared to what, right? But imagine you're the only human on the planet. Right. The only one. Other cats? Cat, oh, cats are fine. Yeah. <laughs> cats, cats, dog, beavers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah <laughs> plenty. Just the only human. Okay. Right? The only human you're, walk, you're walking around. Are you too fat? Are you skinny? Are you dumb? Are you smart? Are you tall? Are you short? You are none of those. All of those are in relationship to somebody else, right? You know, put me, put me in, uh, you know, a country made like Japan or a bunch of pygmies. I'm tall. <laughs> put me on a, put me next, you know, stand me up to the Golden State Warriors, the basketball team, and I'm a shrimp. Right? So what? which am I, tall or short? Neither. Can you ask, am I lovable? Because you can't compare that either. Or you no. can because it's yourself. Well, lovable again. That that's that. It's it's relative. What makes something lovable? Right. right? Okay, I, we right. always say I'm not lovable. Compared to what? Right. That's our reference point. And if I said right. this is the reference point, and of course we got plenty of people telling you what you must be in order to be lovable, how you have to look, the money you have to have, the condition of your life, all of these kinds of things. But then the conditioning of being lovable but take all of that away and what's left right? Right. just you and that's lovable <laughs> yes there um, it is because what happens is is if you take all the way away you find the love is simply there yeah you don't have to learn to love yourself love is just there right 
it gets covered up by by these artificial relative reference points and comparing and 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 out of that comes the judgment and and all of that and we lose ourselves and that we think i am not lovable right i don't love myself right well, let go of the comparison what's left you'll find that at the heart of that is just this contentment that's pure love how else what else could it be because when you don't compare yourself to anybody else you're goddamn perfect yeah <laughs> you that, everybody. You're perfect. <laughs> you really are perfect. You really are. <laughs> what if someone? Okay, this is interesting. So I guess it's down to you. you have to do the work. You really do have to do the self inquiry work because if somebody like, all right, I, I I give up. Okay, I'm perfect. I'll accept that. And then, but in the back of their mind, they're thinking, if I can just accept this, then the right person will yeah, come that's along. Right. <laughs> it's yes. that fixing component. So does the fixing desire to fix component just fall, just drop when we do the self from queer work? Well, yes, be, yeah, it, 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 it drops away because you see there's not absolutely nothing to fix. That what you were trying to fix was imaginary. It was an idea of yourself you're holding in your head. And of course, you can't ever fix it because it's just a thought. It's an idea. It's, it, there's nothing of substance there. So it's always going to be shifting and changing. It's totally unstable, right? The moment you get it to be the way you want it, what will happen? Oh, well, I, there's something else. I mean, the, the, the latest whiz-bang thing is going to come out, the latest trend. And now you oh, got to conform to that. Now you're going to have to be off, off to there. That, that's, it's a never-ending. It's like painting the Golden Gate Bridge, right? Start at one end and then you start over again when you're done. Uh, that's yeah. self-help it and it's endless it is absolutely endless and it will be endless because the self you're trying to help is a ghost you're giving medicine to a ghost <laughs> that was my f I, I loved when i heard you say that months ago that was the favorite one you're giving medicine to a ghost Ooh. yeah the ghost goes to the doctor right hey doc i'm not feeling very well <laughs> uh you're dead <laughs> 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 right right i know that i know that intellectually but you know, it's, it's, yes it, yes it, it's, the yeah. um I, that's so funny i just when i think i have i have this obsession with buying food and i and i'll i'm like wow i have so much food i could eat for a month and then i suddenly need one thing you know two days later and I'll go and then I'll buy 20 things and I'll think, God, <laughs> so I, that kind of related to me. I was like, yeah, just like painting the golden guy. I never heard that one. If I love that one. Um, I'm yes. going to go through just cause I, I always like to peek in around that quarter too. Cause typically this is like our radio show on video, but it is fun right. to see everybody and say hi and, and see if I yes. got some specific burning hearts, desires, questions. <laughs> so, and I guess scroll to the tippy top. My goodness. Okay. Did I go to the top enough? Here we go. So good morning, everyone. Um, okay. So we do have, okay. I might be going back to the beginning though. Did I? Ah, that is a good one. Oh, I love that. I'm not going to try to pronounce that. Should I? Just Nezulia. call her Bob. Is it? Just call her Bob. That's oh, Bob, that's Bob. Oh, Bob. That's Bob. Oh, that's Bob. Yeah. Because okay. okay. <laughs> everybody looks at it. Where that name goes. <laughs> Bob. She's only a Bob. Bob. Yeah. All right. I love the question <laughs> because she really, um, she she thought that by me being seen, just meant by literally, physically, getting out into the world, mingling, networking, talking to people, showing up to things. Um, first of all, that can be traumatizing and frightening if you if you're not ready. And I I can I can attest to that one. Um yes. So, and, and if I may, I'm just going to throw this one in here, Bob. Um, I remember when I was dating this wonderful fella at one point and he looked right into my eyes and he said, it's okay, Lisa, not to worry. I can see you who you really are. Oh, I bolted. I was over. I don't. Oh yeah. I'm out of here. <laughs> no way. <laughs> and it terrified me. And, um, and yeah. what a lovely, beautiful thing for someone to say to somebody, but, uh, I wasn't ready. So I'm wondering, um, do we take those as, as you know, when, when we do force ourselves or say, all right, I'll go out and be seen, but it doesn't feel right. Where does that leave no, us? No, that's not, yeah, that, you know, maybe that's something you do. Um, and, you know, I, I prefer people to going out and socializing rather than hiding in their houses. Yes. Right? But that's, that's not the depths of this. Um, it, it, there has to be, you first have to see yourself. 
you do have to come to see you, right? Which means you have to sort through all of the ideas that you've accumulated about yourself, all the beliefs and assumptions, all of the stuff that we've accumulated uh, over time. That has to be seen through, right? And as that happens, because we identify with all these characteristics and qualities, as we begin to see them for what they are, just things that have accumulated over time, various beliefs and conditioning, right? then seen as that, they begin to dissolve. And, and when they begin to dissolve, it's like the clouds clearing, you begin to appear. It's not, it doesn't require effort. It's not like you have to manufacture anything. Right. When the clouds go away, you don't have to come on, sky, come on. It doesn't have to show up. Right. It's already there. Right. Right. So you don't have to replace it with something. So this isn't a positive affirmation where I'm going to try to replace a bad thought with a good thought. Right. Which just creates a different version of the same thing. We want the real you. Right. Which means it's already there. It's covered up. So we want to uncover it. And you'll just find yourself naturally being drawn to things, you know, interested in things you weren't interested in before, interested in people you weren't interested in before, saying, saying more openly how, how you feel when you're in a conversation, feeling more comfortable when you're in a situation that's, that's new or, or, or challenging. You won't have the same kind of level of intimidation. These are your nat- natural characteristics. You don't have to create them. This is the good news. You, you simply have to peel away what you're not. You don't have to become anything. Right? This, is, this is not personal development. You don't need to develop anything. Right? You need to know, know you. And so, um, you know, and things like networking events. My God, what could be more artificial than a network of everybody trying to be nice and kind to each other and everybody's just, I want your business. <laughs> yes. <laughs> How yeah. do I get your business? Right? Yeah. What do I got to say to get your business? Right? Yes. Yeah. And it's okay because that's understood at a network event. That's what you're there for, right? Yes. You're not there to be anything other than you're, you're there, you know, you're there for exchanging business cards and making, making business. You um, really are swimming with the sharks, but you're in that cage. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> you, you know, the sharks are there. You're in the cage. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and you're handing out and you're handing out your waterproof business cards. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's actually a funny bad joke. If you're at a networking event and you and you laminated them, and people ask you why you did that, well, it's waterproof for because all the sharks. And that's all the sharks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, it isn't forcing yourself I- into being visible because the fact of the matter is, if you're not ready for it, it, it can be quite traumatic. It can push you deeper into the cave. Um, yeah. Yeah, and Trauma. you simply don't want to put yourself into circumstances that are going to intensify the trauma. We need to release the trauma. Right? Yes. And that means creating an environment of inner safety. And the environment of inner safety, the other word for that is love. Mm. I have to write that before I forget. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> you have to release it's my, it. you know, it's my ongoing theme. I say it all and over and over again. It is it, the the way to to freedom is to create the environment in which it's safe for you to be free. Because the nervous system is an adaptive mechanism, it always co- it always conforms itself to whatever the environment is. If the environment's not safe, it's in defense. If the environment becomes safe, drops out of defense and goes into the expressive mode. It's what it does. That's why it's so effortless change the environment, it will change, right? But right now we are all maintaining this environment, inner environment. I'm not lovable. I've got to be, I've got to try to love myself. All these, uh, you know, all these attempts to do that. Then we put self-help on top of it and personal development, all these things to fix ourselves. And the nervous system keeps getting the same message it got from the time you were a child. You're not okay. You got to get fixed, right? And so it's just sitting there trying to protect you, trying to protect the you that doesn't need fixing. <laughs> yes. Right. It, and just because I, I love said, if you keep doing something, um, sometimes like say, if, I don't know, you're afraid to go out on the boat, um, but you just do it over and over that you're eventually not. 
I'm wondering if you really, it's not that you're not afraid anymore. It's just you've had to create a personal, an identity. You've had to create a thing. If, if yeah. you're forced to do something that you don't want to do, um, I picked a silly thing there, but whatever. <laughs> it was like, you know. Well, no, it is. I, I've worked with job. people who are afraid to drive over a bridge. Yes. Yes. So if you're, if you're forced to do it over, like maybe, I don't know. Like that's so if you're about love, we're talking about loving yourself. So if you're forced to, I do love myself. Oh, I love myself. But it, you know, affirmations and stuff, but, and you're so yeah. used to saying it, but then behind closed doors, you're going to feel that there's, yes. that's not who yeah, that. Yeah. Affirmations don't penetrate. The nervous system is perfectly defended against that. It'll see it coming. Go, God, what a joke. Really? <laughs> that again, you're going to try that again. Come on. <laughs> I, I mean, it's completely unfazed. It doesn't get, it goes nowhere. Uh, uh, it, 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 it's useless. Um, and that what they use exposure therapy or something like that. They just make people, you know, I'm afraid of spiders. So they put spiders on their face and stuff yes. like that. It didn't work. It Thank didn't work. It made it, it made it worse. It made it worse. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You can't, you can't do it that way. Um, the way it has to happen is the nervous system itself has to discover that it is safe to mm. come out. And you can't force that by sticking it on a boat, you know, when you're terrified of water. <laughs> yes. Or you know, dating be, or relationships, you know, we've got a couple people here or just continuously dating people until, you know, yes, it's, it's gotta be, it's not yes. about loving yourself first, but it's about feeling safe to be seen and to, to see others. Yes. Yeah. Safety and love are, this, are actually the same thing. Oh, yes. That's beautiful. I like that. As, as Ice T, as Ice T once said, "Sex makes the world go round. Love just makes it safe." Ah, oh. <laughs> pretty brilliant. Brilliant. I love that. I was going to. Did you miss anybody? Yeah, safety and love is safe. Genuine, unconditional love is totally safe. Right. And 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 if it's totally safe, the nervous system doesn't need to be in defensive posture. It does. There's nothing it needs to defend itself against. So the ultimate of love is this inner environment of pure safety. It's okay to be me. It boils down to that. You're not trying to be something lovable, because that would be simply trying to become what what you know your parents or somebody else said was lovable. But yeah, but it'll never be satisfying because it's not you. Yeah. It's always affected. And so yeah, the, there's only one thing you can do: make it safe for yourself to be yourself. And when I work with people who have those kinds of phobia, that's simply what we do. The, the phobia is simply trying to protect you from some kind of a, a danger that it assumes is there, right? But if you bring it into a point of safety. It, the nervous system will look for itself to see if it really is safe. It's not stupid, right? right? It's just gotten stuck in an assumption. And because you're constantly trying to fix yourself, it reinforces its assumption that says the world is not safe. And so it stays right where it is, which is why self-help almost always fails. And if it does have some kind of result, it's minuscule. It's meager. Right. Ho hopefully people are using self-help as a pointer towards self-inquiry like to get them there you know they're yeah it, 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 yes and and if you're doing the self-inquiry you'll find that there's a lot of the self-help techniques that actually become effective <laughs> they actually do work right? right but they they work as a mechanism for freeing the nervous system from its assumptions if if that understanding is there then they can become effective tools if it's not You'll get nowhere. I guarantee it. It's like, yeah, just memorizing something, yeah. but not understanding. That's why it. the self-help industry keeps getting bigger, not smaller. If it was working, it would be getting smaller. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. As we discussed yesterday about processes, they'll be, be eliminated. There's no yes. need for it. Yes, that's another show. But <laughs> it goes. And if you are watching yep. and, and thinking, I, this is, this is sounding right to me. I'm, I'm resonating with this, but gosh, I just don't even have a clue where to start here. Um, GP is doing, well, you know what? It's not specifically on this, but it is all about this because it's all the same. It's self inquiry it's inner reconciliation. Um, we're asking, inviting everybody to tune in on Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern time. Um, oh, we could put the link here, I guess, um, after 
in the comments, maybe what we'll do is so you just got to, can we do that? Or where could they just show up on your, your YouTube channel? Oh, for, oh, for, for the, the live demonstration, the free demo, the free demo. Yes. I, um, I want to invite yeah, you. It's, it's my, uh, yes, it's my YouTube channel. So if you're watching on YouTube, it'll be right here. Okay, and I have a lot of people that are, if you're watching on Facebook, um, it'll be on, it'll be on Facebook. Um, I guess I just plan. Maybe I should. We should talk to Ruth about whether I can put it into the Enlightened World Network. The EWN. Well, we'll find, yeah, we'll find the magical way for you guys. <laughs> Go on. Yeah. But, uh, and only otherwise, because... it's just it's just YouTube slash GP Walsh. Perfect. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Couldn't you, get and then, easier. And then it'll be Evan. Evan Gregor is going to be there. They'll be doing a demonstration. The reason why I really want to invite people is because we've been talking a lot about love and this is really self-inquiry because then you can you know who you are <laughs> and right. sometimes it just can you know if we try to wrap our minds around it i know that that's not you can't go that route it really has right. to come from this place of being and so by having by participating in the demonstration on thursday at 1 p.m eastern time uh, with both evan and gp it, it'll just give you a sense of okay this is this is the route so you know, when I first learned about these and started doing this, I think, wow, this is just such a different way. This is not a way I would have thought before or, or seeked, sought out. <laughs> right? Sought and out. I, you know, I would have <laughs> done some more self-development, more, oh, maybe it's religion. Maybe it's the spiritual. Maybe it's metaphysics. You know, yes. it's crystals. It's this. It's that. Who knows? <laughs> but it could be anything. But I really, yes. yeah, I just want to invite everybody. It's free. It's, it's you know, on, on GP uh, Walsh's the YouTube channel. Just show up there at 1 p.m. Eastern time to at least participate and, and witness that and, and see what this inner reconciliation is all about. And um, tomorrow, again, reminder for all the patrons, if you are a monthly patron of GPs there, that's a $15 US a month. It's super affordable, we hope, um, for everybody and just allowing, you know, GP to do what he does and for you guys to be at least participating. But this this tomorrow um, is the live sat song for patron members. And this is where you're able to, like here, we couldn't really get into all the questions and people and one-on-one -on -one experience, but with the patron and doing the live sat song, then there you go. Perfect link. The um, link. Yes. You were able to, it's, you know, you ask questions, raise your hand, put in the comments and GP is addressing every single one. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, a, it's a zoom meeting so we can actually talk. Yes. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, and yeah, which allows me to, allows me to probe a little deeper than just, you know, a question in the chat. I can actually engage with the person that it, it helps to make, to, to deepen uh, more quickly the under the understanding yeah and we, you yeah. know you can get more of the nuances when you're actually having a conversation than you than you can in the in the chat even though the chats are great and uh, and I do it a lot but um, <laughs> yeah it's it's a it's another level Yes. Yeah. And, and getting into the being the patron versus the satsang on Sundays, which is it's a smaller group. We can, you know, you have more time for them. And um, yeah, I just, I love them all. I mean, you're so generous with your, your time. You just love showing up and teaching is what it is. And <laughs> it, it's, it's nice to help people end their suffering. And um, oh, Kamal wants to know about what you are drinking. Um, you'll have to put your recipe for your green drink and your uh, not matcha. Oh, wow. Yeah. This is like point. all sorts of stuff in there. There's <laughs> apple cider vinegar and lemon juice. And I even put in different kinds of tea, and then I add um, you know there's spirulina and chlorella and all sorts of different things. Plus, um, in this particular case, some amino acids and yeah. um, uh, and, and the like. So it's one healthy little drink. It is a little boost there. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. found something really interesting. I've never heard it before. And instead of apple cider vinegar, I found pomegranate vinegar um, with the mother in it and everything. And whoo, is it ever tasty? <laughs> really? Because uh, apple yes. cider vinegar is not tasty. Yeah. You need to No, I know, but the no, pomegranate, yeah, I, I yeah. will put a picture in here. This was really, really good. But anyway, so there we go. A little shy of the off topic there, but that's okay. We're just happy that everybody has joined with us. Thank you so much. And if you do have a question or a topic that you think, wow, I'd really like to hear you guys talk about the subject, um, then leave a comment right here. We can see this, or you can message us, or you know, go right to gpwalsh.com or email. We have the info. Do we still have that? Yeah, info at gpwalsh.com. Questions, questions. Questions. It's questions. 
that we've got. Questions. Yeah, that I know we got. Yeah. <laughs> questions with an S at gpwalsh.com. Um, and oh, there we go. Susanna just tuned in there. We were going to ask you about our mic level, but you know what? Hopefully we're all good. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, GP, we've got you today, tomorrow, and Thursday. So we'll let you, we'll let you get your your voice rest and we'll uh, see everybody tomorrow. Hopefully oh, somebody's drinking the same thing I am. Really? <laughs> yeah. I'm drinking the same thing. Thanks to GP. Oh, <laughs> maybe, maybe referring to the, to the mate, but, Oh, this is funny. Yeah. This, this is, is very, this is very <laughs> uh, yeah. You're going to have your own dra- signature cute. drink here. <laughs> I, I, I do. Yeah. I'm going to have to get a brand name and then we can get product placement. Right, I'll yeah, put a little yeah. brand on. The call it, we can call it the C drink, S I for self inquiry, but C. <laughs> C. <laughs> All right, guys, we will talk to you guys Wonderful. soon. See you next Tuesday. Right. <laughs> Bye, everyone.